What is going on guys, it is Blink here, back with a new guide. So, in this guide we'll be talking about tips to help you fight with low health. Also, the v bucks giveaway is still going on, so make sure to visit the link in the description to enter. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications as opposed to Amazon gift card code in the comments every time I upload. By turning on notifications, you have a way better chance of getting here first and redeeming that code. Anyways guys, let's get to this guide. So, in this first situation, I had 10 HP and there was an opponent to my right. And he was to my right because I forced him to peek on the right side of my screen. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the right side peeking angle. I've talked about this plenty of times and it does work. When your opponent's on the right side of your screen, you're utilizing the right side peeking angle, which is what you want to do. Now, the benefits to this is that you'll be able to line up your crosshair onto your opponent before he's even able to peek. It also makes it much easier to peek your opponents when he's on the right side of your screen. You can basically pre-shoot before he even sees you. Now, if you don't have the right side peeking angle, there are two things you can do. If your opponent's on the left side of your screen, then you want to jump across and take a shot. This will throw his aim off a little and it'll throw yours off too, but it will lower your opponent's advantage because it does make you a harder target to hit. Now, you utilize this if he's super close and he's just non-stop pushing you. The next thing you can do is make your own right side peeking angle. If you're inside a building and there's no room that gives you the angle, then you can make it yourself. Simply place down a wall and edit the four bottom right boxes or edit all the boxes in the middle and the right side. This will create a slit that you can sit behind and pre-line up the entrance you're expecting your opponent to walk through. It's an absolute awesome way of always having that right side peeking angle. Here's one more example where you utilize the right side peeking angle. Now, this player got the weapon first, so don't start smacking him 20 times. Just make a run for it because it's the only thing you can do. Anytime a player takes a weapon from you, you always want to make a run for it and try finding the closest weapon to you. Now, I never ended up hitting the bushes for materials because he fought another player, so it gave me more time to run, and usually you'll want to hit a few things to have enough for a wall or two. You then want to place the wall behind you as you keep running and gathering materials. Keep repeating this process until you get your weapon. I also never needed to do it because the entrance to the next building wasn't too far off. If you've got to run a little farther to get a weapon, then yeah, make sure you're gathering materials and placing walls behind you. Now I did end up finding a weapon and you can see I utilized that right side peeking angle and got a few shots to finish off my opponent. He was hurt so that's probably why I got the elimination, but that angle did assist me. Now, with the AR, it's not easy to do and don't expect it to work every time. Shotguns are what you'll be doing it with the most because you can peek in and out pretty quickly. So, in this next example, I had 10 HP and once again, I utilized that right side peeking angle. I then placed a wall and a staircase as there was no cover around me. You then want to take a shot or two depending on if your opponent is taking shots or not. And basically after every shotgun shot, you want to place down a wall and then a staircase and peek over again. Repeat that process after every shot. I did run out of materials at the end, but you can see I was going to place it on a wall with stairs after taking two shots. Now, I took two shots because my opponent never noticed my positioning after taking the first shot. This allowed me to quickly readjust and take another shot before needing to build. Now, let's get into a few building fighting examples. So, in this example, my opponent kept building up every time I tried healing. This never gave me time to use my med kit, and especially if you don't have a pretty big material mess, it's going to be hard to hide down below to heal. So, what you want to do is simply fight him off. Your objective is to put on any kind of damage, that way he backs away and heals up himself. This will give you time to heal too. Now, I was able to eliminate him because I shot his floor down, and he was also exposed the whole time. Now, I did put on some solid damage before shooting out his floor, so he would have potentially healed. Now, in this next example, I take a lot of damage, although the structure we're on is pretty big. So, anytime you've got a pretty big structure, drop down lower and box yourself in somewhere where it's hard to spot you. Had my opponent found where I was and started shooting at my box, I would have changed my positioning. And it is a little harder to spot players when the structure is a big mess. So, if your opponent keeps building up like in my last example, simply drop down lower and heal up. Now, in this next example, I got hit hard and healed up inside the building. If you've got a building nearby, use it to heal up because it's natural cover and your opponent doesn't see anything being built, so it makes it harder to find you. Now, I had a jump pad and I remember that the last opponent I fought had bandages, so if you know a location of any sort of meds, then jump pad to them. You're at risk of getting shot down, but it's still a solid move to make. I was able to find the bandages and heal up, all because I knew where they were located, so make sure to pin locations of meds in your head. Jump padding to them is a great option to execute. Now, you might be worried that your opponent will follow you, and a good way of slowing down your opponent from using your jump pad is by boxing yourself in, then trapping all four walls. The more walls you have trapped, the better. You then want to open up the roof and place down a jump pad. 
your opponent now has to destroy all four walls in order to use the jump pad. This will give you more time to get a weight, and by the time he destroys all four, you might be gone from his view. Or, if you have a clinger, then you can also throw a clinger on the jump pad before jumping on it. It will go off after you've already left, resulting in your opponent not being able to follow you. Now, for this last clip, I want to quickly show you guys a proper way to fight someone without materials. So, say you've landed, and you and your opponent have no materials, and it's just a straight out gunfight. All you want to do is simply spam crouch as you shoot. This will throw your opponent's aim off, especially if he's aiming for your head. He'll end up missing a few shots, and he'll have to readjust his crosshair. That readjustment might be the time that saves you. Now, as my opponent shot, he never added the crouch spam, and it gave me an easier time to connect my shots. This works very well, and it won't mess up your own aim. Well guys, that's it for this guide. Hope it can help some people out, and a like and a sub will be greatly appreciated, as it does help me out a lot. Anyways guys, thanks for watching, and hope you have a great rest of your day or night, and I'll see you on the next one.